Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'll call to order this meeting on January 22nd, uh, 2019. And we'll please stand for the national anthem. Okay, I'll ask for any disclosure of any uh, interest, pecuniary interests, or general nature thereof. Seeing none, uh, first item on the agenda tonight is uh, two public hearings. The first one is an application for an amendment to Township of Waynefleet Zoning Bylaw 034-2014, file number Z03-2018W at 12394 Lakeshore Road in Waynefleet. So the purpose of a public meeting, in accordance with the Planning Act, a public meeting is held for applicants to present their proposal to the public and council to receive comments and answer questions that the public and members of council may have. Staff and council will not make a recommendation or decision on the proposal at a public meeting. A planning report will be brought forward by staff and considered by council at a later date. As a member of the public, you are welcome to request to be notified of any future public or council meetings respecting this application. Please provide your contact information on the sign-in sheet located at the back of council chambers, and please be advised that the sign-in information will form part of the public record for this application. So we just want to uh, make clear that the public meeting is for us to receive the information and we are not in a position of uh, debating uh, the merits of pros or cons of uh, information that arises in the public meeting. We receive the information, it goes into our report and that comes back later to council for consideration. So I'll ask uh, first for uh, our planner to speak to this and uh, provide the information. So the subject property is located at 12394 Lakeshore Road uh, and the property size is just over one hectare uh, and is currently being used for uh, residential storage purposes. The zoning amendment uh, seeks to rezone the property from institutional to residential Lakeshore um, with a lot coverage of 10%. Um, to recognize the change in use from a uh, previous uh, St. Teresa's Church to uh, now a residential use. Um, we're also seeking a site-specific zoning uh, regulation regarding the residential storage as a principal use um, and to recognize a uh, maximum height of 9.6 meters where the residential lakeshore zone requires um, has a maximum of 9 meters. Um, so there were some documents and studies that were submitted in support of the application, and those are currently going under technical review. Um, those studies include a phase one environmental site assessment, a planning justification letter, a site plan, and the sewage system specifications for the property. Um, in terms of agency comments and written public comment, received prior to the meeting. Uh, I did receive some comments from Hydro One and they noted no concern with the ch proposed change in use. Um, that being said, any comments received after the public meeting will be addressed in the staff report. So there still are a number of agency comments that I'm waiting on and those will be addressed in the recommendation report.
Thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from council on this uh, planning issue? Okay, seeing none, uh, requests for comment uh, from the public, input from the gallery. Anybody wish to speak to this? Now is the time to step up to the podium. Any interest at all in speaking to this bylaw change? Okay, seeing none. Uh, next steps, then, planner. So the staff report um, regarding the application will be brought forward for council's consideration uh, at a later date, and that report will go into a detailed analysis on the planning policy, as well as outlining the agency and public comments received. Um, so if you wish to be notified of any future meeting or the decision of council regarding this application, uh, you can make a written request to the clerk, and there's also that sign-in sheet at the back of council chambers. So if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submission to the township before a decision is made, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the township to the local planning appeal tribunal. And if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public hearing or make written submission to the township before a decision is made, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal unless in the opinion of the tribunal there are reasonable grounds reasonable grounds to do so. Um, so, and as I said, if there's any comments after today, they can provide written comments to the clerk and that will be included in a future staff report. Thank you very much. So just in closing on this one, if you wish to be notified passing of proposed zoning bylaw amendment or of the refusal of the request to amend the zoning bylaw, you must make a written request to the clerk of the township of Waynefleet. So, and that closes that bylaw amendment. Okay, we're now moving on to the second uh, public hearing, and this is for file number P012018 Whiskey W and Z042018 W. And again, the purpose of the meeting, in accordance with the Planning Act, a public meeting is held for applicants to present their proposal to the public and council to receive comments and answer questions that the public and members of council may have. Staff and council will not make a recommendation or decisions on the proposal at a public meeting. A planning report will be brought forward by staff and considered by council at a later date. As a member of the public, you are welcome to request to be notified of any future public or council meetings respecting this application. Please provide your contact information on the sign-in sheet located at the back of council chambers. Please be advised that the sign-in information will form part of the public record for this application. And uh, Madam Planner, will you please speak to this one? The subject property for these two applications is located on Marshville Drive, which is just east of the municipal complex here in the hamlet of Waynefleet. The property is designated as village residential with an environmental conservation area in the township's official plan and is zoned residential R1 with a holding provision and hazard under uh, zoning bylaw 581-78. The draft plan of subdivision application proposes 14 residential lots, one block for water for fire suppression, and two blocks for proposed roads. Um, the zoning amendment application proposes to remove the hazard zone and to lift the holding provision. Um, there are a number of reports and studies filed in support of the application. These include um, the draft plan of subdivision, the planning justification report, environmental impact statement, hydrogeological assessment, noise feasibility study, and a stormwater management plan. These reports and studies are currently undergoing technical review by township staff and commenting agencies. In terms of comments that I've received to date, um, I've received comments from Canada Post, Bell Canada, the Ministry of Transportation, and Rogers Communications. Um, Canada Post requested that certain conditions be added to any approval, which cover um, service delivery through a centralized mailbox and um, location of that, both uh, a temporary site during construction and a permanent site after construction. Uh, they also have a number of conditions that would be included in any uh, future subdivision agreement regarding um, display of information and sales office um, and the curb and sidewalk requirements for that. 
Um, Bell Canada noted that the applicant should contact them during the detailed design, design stage to ensure sufficient wireline communication infrastructure. Uh, and they also had a condition that should be added to, uh, requested that a condition be added uh, to any approval um, regarding easements that Bell Canada may need. Uh, in terms of the Ministry of Transportation comments, they noted that a work permit is required prior to, prior to any work being done. Um, they noted a setback of 14 meters from the Highway 3 property line for all proposed buildings, structures, utilities, etc. cetera. Um, they noted that noise mitigation is the responsibility of the developer, and they also had uh, requested a condition to be added to any approval um, that covers the stormwater management report. In terms of Rogers uh, communications, they noted no conflict as there are no Rogers uh, infrastructure in the area. Thank you. And now we're going to have uh, details of the application by the applicant. I believe Stephen Rivers is speaking to that, sir. If you would uh, state your name and your address, please. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Mayor. Councillors, my name is Stephen Rivers. My address is 189 Clare Avenue in Port Colborne. Would it be better to address you from here or from Yes, I would. Please come to the podium. <clears throat> and there's the little red button there to turn it on. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, councillors, it's an honour to be before you tonight for the first time. Uh, first off, I'd like to uh, commend your staff for the assistance they've given us in, in putting this proposal together, and uh, particularly to Sarah for guiding us through this uh, fairly complicated process. Uh, the uh, subject property is, is shown on the slide up there, but it doesn't come up, up very well. As, uh, as Sarah mentioned, the uh, Regional official plan designates the subject property as Hamlet. The official plan designation in the Waynefleet official plan is uh, uh, village residential and, and uh, environmental protection. There are a number of zoning provisions that are in place, and, and uh, you know, we can go through those if, if, uh, if necessary, but basically the proposal is to create lots that satisfy uh, all of the uh, township zoning provisions. Uh, the zoning, uh, as Sarah has pointed out, is uh, village residential uh, hazard and with a holding provision. The provincial policy statement focuses on growth and development within settlement areas such as the Hamlet of Waynefleet. Settlement areas such as Waynefleet Hamlet are to be the focus of growth and development and their vitality and regeneration is to be promoted. Land use patterns are to be based on densities and a mix of land uses, which efficiently use land and resources and the infrastructure and public service facilities planned or available. The regional official plan, as I said, designates the property Hamlet. It provides for a limited number of non-farm development, a limited non-farm development in Hamlets. It provides for efficient and orderly pattern of land uses, which lessen land use conflicts. Uh, requires minimum municipal services and conserves natural resources. There are adequate services for such, uh, such as school busing and fire protection already available. There's no interference or, uh, with the operation of the arterial road system of uh, Highway 3. The township's official plan designates the property village residential and environmental conservation area. The village, res the village residential designation Permitted uses include single detached dwellings, which are what are proposed here. With respect to the character, with respect to the character and, and image of the surrounding residential area. A hydrogeologic assessment has been carried out. The site is considered low risk and suitable on-site uh, sewer systems and water supply systems uh, servicing serviced by groundwater. There are no hydrogeological based impediments to this site development. Environmental impact statement has also been prepared. The proportion of the woodland illustrated in the following figure is to be maintained. It is anticipated that the remaining woodland on the adjacent subject pro on and adjacent to the subject property will continue to be maintained in cur its current functions. 
to help maintain habitat on the portions of the property to be developed, mitigation measures are to be implemented during the design and construction of residences. The proposal is not, is not a significant modification to the spatial extent or the boundaries of the woodland. And I think this uh, image shows the, the woodland uh, covering where a lot of the existing uh, residential development has occurred and uh, basically adjacent to, to Highway 3. The lands uh, to the west uh, to be developed adjacent to the, uh, the soccer pitches are uh, open fields. Noise feasibility study has been undertaken. Building construction meeting the minimum requirements of Ontario Building code, code will provide sufficient acoustical insulation for all the dwellings in the development. Warning clauses are also recommended to inform uh, future occupants of the noise impacts and to address uh, sound level excesses. Stormwater management plan has been undertaken, as, as Sarah mentioned. The post development peak flows. Uh, peak flow targets will be achieved by controlling discharge from the site uh, and as Sarah mentioned that will be a, a, a obtained through the in installation of a, uh, of a tank for uh, uh, storing storm water and releasing it as, uh, as appropriate. This conceptual plan of the development, uh, basically uh, new residential development uh, in, on a new road uh, parallel to Highway 3 and a second road uh, extending west to the boundary of the uh, township's uh, uh, recreation uh, land. In my opinion, the proposed development conforms with, with the provisions of the Planning Act, the Provincial Policy Statement, the Growth Plan, and the objectives of the Regional Plan and the Wayne Fleet Official Plan. Subject properties are in the Wayne Fleet Hamlet, which enables their residential development. There are no significant negative impacts in terms of hydrogeology, natural environment, noise, or stormwater. Mr. Mayor, Councillors, this is my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions from Council? Seeing no questions. Uh, we're going to now open it up to the floor. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much, sir. Request uh, for comments and questions and input from the gallery now, please. So if you wish to speak to this matter, uh, please just uh, go up to the podium. And I know there's at least one, possibly two. So if they would come forward and uh, speak. And sir, if you would, uh, for the record, state your name and your address, please. Certainly. Um, my name is Brad Gowland. Uh, my wife and I, Elizabeth, live at 31806 Marshfield Drive in Waynefleet. Um, uh, anything else? Go ahead. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, members of council staff, fellow fleeters, um, I um, didn't expect to, to be speaking here about anything, uh, having moved into the, the community about a little over a year and three quarters ago. Um, but um, anyway, we're here. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see if we can make it right. Um, one of the things that I, I, I wanted to talk about, and um, do I get to control the, the slides? Okay, thank you. Um, so what I wanted to do is I wanted to bring to your attention tonight the, um, some, of the, some of the activities that have already taken place uh, in the Marshville area with the development. Um, and uh, unfortunately, nothing has been done as of yet to, to rectify this issue. So um, through the, the fine work of uh, Google Earth, we have a, an overview of the, 
the, the large shot of the, the community. Then we move in to the, the corner and the, the development in question. And if you could see the little red dot, it says home. Um, then we zoomed right in and you can see our house and our, our lovely gardens that we put in in 2018. That helped, thank you. Um, and then we're gonna zoom to the north and we start to see uh, where some clear cutting has already begun in the proposed development. And um, this is what I wish to talk about today, about the, the illegal cutting of trees in the, in the community. As you can see clearly from the, the aerial shot, all around the area, probably about the center left is, is where you see the brown patch. Um, that was as lush as the rest of the, uh, the uh, screenshot that is there until June 26 when the trees started to fall. Um, here's a, a, an even closer shot from Google Earth. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to just review the, um, the uh, tree bylaw that the region of Niagara has, and that is for, for those keeping count, it's number 30-2008. Um, so this is a, a, so some of these shots now are, are mine and the, uh, the puppy that we had as we were out for a walk one evening, I guess it was July 11th, I took these photos. So they're not that clear because he's, like I said, it's just puppy training and we're just trying to, to, to work him through. So some of the key purposes of the bylaw are to preserve and improve woodlands in the regional municipality of Niagara through good forestry practices. Some of those practices include not cutting trees during uh, nesting season and when, tr you know, there are animals that are using the trees, animals, uh, beasts, insects, uh, that are significant to the area that are using these trees as, as nesting sites. Um, the bylaw also states that good forestry practices to sustain healthy woodlands related to natural habitats and environments, and I just said this in my second point just a second ago. Um, part of the, the goal of the forestry is to help preserve 30% of Niagara in green space, um, minimizing destruction of forests, uh, contributing to human health, recreation, enjoyment, and quality of life through maintenance of woodland cover. Uh, da, 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 da. The stated bylaw said that no person through their own actions through any other or any other person shall injure or destroy any trees in any woodlands. So these pictures that I took are from the roadway, not to be construed of trespassing on the, on the property. Um, of some of the trees that came down on the, uh, the 26th. Um, the penalties, the bylaw states, for any person who contravenes this provision or, of the bylaw or an order is issued is guilty of an offense is liable to, on the first conviction of a fine, no more than $10,000 or $1,000, whichever is greater. And for corporations that that goes to, I believe, $50,000 for a corporation, which uh, is the case here. There was a work order stopped on the cutting of trees. Um, the regional forester, the, the person that, that maintains this bylaw, has said that they were cutting dead trees or trees that were hazardous. And as you saw from some of the original shots, from the aerial shots, there were no houses around, so there was nothing of any hazard. And my f taking of these photographs was done some two weeks after the fact that they were cut, and you can still see leaves on the trees. Uh, this is just one of the um, the image, or one of the piles of, of trees with brush, or brush piles, with leaves on them that are on the property. Um, and again, another shot, right in the middle, there's a, a small pond. Uh, one of the issues that we have had besides the, the tree cutting is the, the response that we've had from the, the regional forester. This thing has wheels. <laughs> um, so we have asked the, the, the member of the regional staff and the NPCA um, has a, a formal complaint been filed up until this point in time because I believe it was the township that took the 
the matter to get the uh, work stoppage in place. Um, to the best of our knowledge, no formal complaint has been recognized by the, uh, the region or the NPCA. Um, we have asked can or how we recognize a, a, a complaint on this, this matter. And um, he is saying that the uh, planning, uh, uh, the plan has been accepted by the town and um, he is going to wait and see whether anything is, is uh, how this plays out before he, he makes an act on this. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so the last response that I had from the compliance and enforcement officer slash forester was that the application has been filed and deemed complete by the municipality with a public meeting scheduled for January 22nd. I told the owner saw developments to cease more tree clearing until approvals are in place. They have followed those instructions to date. I'm not moving forward with the bylaw charges at this time since the property is slated for development. I will defer that option if the development uh, application is denied by the municipality. What I don't understand is, is that why he's not acting upon it. It's like saying to someone that I'm going to rob this bank, but I'm going to give the money to the orphanage. It just doesn't make sense. Should this plan in its later stages be accepted, I would still like to see charges laid for the damage that's done. Um, and in some cases, the you know I did some research on where what sort of tree uh, bylaws have been violated or broken. The, and in the research that I did, there were two that came up that were quite prominent in, in Hamilton wherein there was one developer was fined $107,000 and denied application to proceed. Um, there was a second one in Ancaster, and he was fined $403,000 for his actions. So this is a serious offense. It needs to be considered as a serious offense. If, if it weren't a serious offense, it, it, there wouldn't be a bylaw. There would be no reason for us to stand here today. So, I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Gowland. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to this matter at this time? Please state your name and address, please. Um, I'm Amanda Mormon. This is my husband, Dwayne Mormon. We live at 31811 Marshville Drive here in Wayne Fleet. And um, tonight we're here to express our objection to the proposed draft plan and subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment filed by SAW Developments. We would like to highlight and raise some awareness to the following areas of concern. In the findings of the environmental impact statement was determined that there are significant woodlands present, significant wildlife habitat, um, there is significant habitat or species of concern present. Um, it's been found that there's outdated studies and reports um, and the hydrological study does not support the official plan. The zoning bylaw amendment date has also expired. According to Schedule 3 of the official plan, only a small portion of the lands is identified as village residential, while the vast majority is designated environmental conservation. Schedule E of the official plan identifies natural environmental features throughout the township, the majority of the subject lands as being significant woodlands. Section 3221 of the official plan identifies the environmental conservation area designation and it, that it includes the following features, significant woodlands, significant wildlife habitat, significant habitat or species of concern, and other evaluated wetlands. The official plan says that it should be protected and maintained so there is no negative impacts on the natural features or its ecological functions. In support of the application, the proponent submitted an environmental impact statement completed by Ian Barrett of Colville Consulting, dated November 2018. Uh, this EIS addresses the presence of each of the features that I mentioned in the, in the statement. 
So to speak to the um, environmental impact statement with regards to significant wildlife habitat and significant habitat or species of concern, breeding bird surveys were conducted on June 8th and 24th of 2015. Significant wildlife habitat and significant habitat or species of concern studies were completed nearly four years ago. Botanical inventories and vegetation mapping was conducted on June 19th and October 2nd of 2015. Amphibian call surveys were conducted on April 24th, May 22nd, June 26th, 2015, but then curiously were subsequently referred to in the same section as the dates of April 15th, May 19th, and June 16th, 2015. Studies are outdated and they appear to be inconclusive in several areas, including the possibility of the gray rattlesnake, which is a species at risk, being present on the property. The Ministry of Natural Resources recommends a comprehensive inventory of the entire area that may be subject to direct and indirect impacts from the proposed activity. The environmental impact statement with regards to the woodland Portions of the subject property have been designated as significant woodland. The EIS reports that existing woodlands measure 8.4 hectares and the woodlands will be reduced to 4.0 hectares. This is considered to be a significant modification, a more than 50% decrease in size. This requires an amendment to the official plan. There is no application of an official plan amendment filed in support of this proposal that I'm aware of. The General Policy 32214 directs that new lots created shall not extend into remaining environmental conservation. Rather, the lands are to be retained in their natural state, maintained as a single block, and zoned to protect their natural features and ecological functions. The proposal of separate ownerships, 14, of the significant woodland area which is four hectares, will not afford the township any opportunity to effectively control and protect the natural environment. Therefore, the significant woodlands need to be retained in a single block as re directed by 322.14. Figure three shows the extent of the vegetation, I know it's hard to see, um, vegetation communities on the subject property. The environmental impact statement report on wetland or other evaluated wetlands. So wetlands are broken down into four major types, swamps, marshes, bogs, and fens. It has been determined and acknowledged by the EIS that the property does in fact have small pockets of wetland on page 19 of his report, and vernal pools are documented to be providing habitat for a variety of wildlife species indicated on page 21. This report clearly highlights and validates that these lands are rightly designated as environmental conservation area. Permitted uses of environmental conservation areas make no mention that the po in the policy of residential uses. And it should also be argued that this land has much more significant area of wetland than the environmental impact statement defines. For this reason, we are requesting an on-site wetland evaluation conducted by the Ministry of Natural Resources applying the Ontario Wetland Evaluation System. With regards to the hydrogeological hydro study, section 3326 of the official plan requires a lot size be a maximum of 1.0 1, of 1 hectare. Unless it can be pr proven on that site, sustainable private servicing can be accommodated on a smaller lot with no negative impacts on the surface or groundwater features. The minimum size can be le no less than 0.4 hectares. The proposed lots are larger than 0.4. However, pursuant to the previously mentioned um, official plan direction that would that significant woodlands should be held as a single block the proposed lots would have to be reduced in size and would need to be reconfigured section 3327 states that the hydrogeological study shall demonstrate that the groundwater quality and quantity for drinking water are capable of providing potable water but this hydro hydrogeological report does not support the use of the groundwater recommended a recommendation to 721. Rather, the installation of cisterns, which is a clear violation of the requirement for the use of groundwater as per the official plan. The zoning bylaw and proposed amendment. Pursuant to 821 of the official plan, it states that the township is required to adopt a new zoning bylaw within the three years of this plan. 
The official plan of the Wayne Township of Waynefleet was adopted by the Township Council in 2011, and the final approval was by the Ontario Municipal Board on August 14, 2014. The zoning bylaw currently affecting the lands, number 581-78, which was approved by Council May 15, 1979, and approved by the Ontario Municipal Board on March 10, 1982, um, to highlight this was 32 years before our official plan. Had the zoning bylaw been updated within the th mandated three years of the adoption of the plan, the subject lands would be more likely zoned as open space or overlay reflecting the environmental conservation area designation rather than the current designation. Section 3225 of the official plan allows de development, site alteration, and non-linear infrastructure may be excuse me, made without an amendment to this plan provided that through the environmental impact study in accordance with section 8.9 that there will be no negative impacts on the natural features or its ecological functions. This township official plan implements section 2.1 of the provincial policy statement which prohibits development and site alteration in or adjacent to, in this case, significant woodlands and a significant wildlife habitat unless it can be dem demonstrated um, that there will be no negative impacts on their features or ecological functions. It is acknowledged on page 22 in the environmental impact statement, quotation, it is our expectation that the proposed development will have minimal impact on the ecological features provided by a cultural thicket, woodland and wetland habitats. No negative impact is clearly not the same as minimal impact. The official plan also encourages transfer, um, the transfer of environmental conservation area lands to the township, conservation authority, or other appropriate public or private organizations. The pro proposal, that, as set out, does not support environmental concerns, best practices, or policies as outlined in the township official plan. We believe that the proposed subdivision and zoning bylaw amendment should not be approved for the following reasons. There is the significance of woodlands present, including species at risk. Significant wildlife habitat is, habitat is present. Significant habitat or species are, of concern are present. There are outdated studies and reports that were presented. There are wetlands present. Hydro, hydrogeological study does not support the official plan as it relies on outdated studies dated from 1984 to 2008. The zoning bylaw amendment date has expired. The township needs to move forward and be progressive in protecting lands defined as, as environmental conservation areas. And finally, Waynefleet res residents have also spoken, not just here, but also out in the community. A commitment to environmental and agricultural preservation and maintaining our identity is critical in keeping, the, keeping your find your countryside message at the forefront. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can we have the lights, please? And is there anyone else that would like to present on this? Okay, that's good. Please state your name and address, please, sir. Push the red button. Uh, my name's Daryl Thompson. I live at 31802 Marshville Drive. I've been uh, in the area for approximately 16 years. Uh, on studying this uh, wetlands uh, proposal that uh, has been written up or, or has been made up for this uh, proposed subdivision, doesn't make any sense. The water does not travel to regional or to uh, side road 20 like it shows in this uh, plan. It travels down the side of my house. I've even floated a boat in my backyard because the water travels from the soccer fields into my backyard. I have approached council before and we had a culvert put across this road in order to alleviate some of this problem. Never happened. The culvert was put in but it wasn't put deep enough.
Just wondering, uh, these reports that uh, Amanda showed, uh, they were brought to you uh, from these gentlemen that want to propose this area. Uh, do we have anything to fall back on as in, are these studies, are we just going to take their word for it or are we going to have our own studies uh, done? So the process this evening is to receive information. Mm -hmm. The planner will take that information and we'll look at that. She'll prepare a report for council to look at at a later date with all the information from the, uh, the developer and your reports. And then we as a council will decide what needs to be done in that respect, whether it needs more looking at or that's the process. Okay, and there was one more. And please state your name and address. I'm Elizabeth Strune, and I reside at 31806 Marshville Drive, uh, Wainfleet. <clears throat> so I take it it's the big button? Just that one? Yeah. Okay, great, thanks. Um, Mr. Mayor and Council and staff and fellow citizens, um, I feel like um, Amanda uh, covered uh, a great deal of points, but I, uh, which was wonderful. Um, I just wanted to uh, discuss the habitat and the ecosystems of the subject lands. So, <clears throat> oh, I'll go back. Um, so, there is a significant woodland uh, on the property, and so that has been stated and agreed. Um, there is a great deal of wetland as well, and I would like to focus uh, a bit on that. This is from Niagara Navigator, and the dark, the darkest areas that are almost black are all wet. That is all ponds or vernal pools. Some of them are quite small, um, not so small if you are there, but they look quite tiny on the map. But it, it does give you an idea of how very much water is in this woods. It is technically a swamp. Um, here is one of the ponds. And you can see in the foreground, these are um, plants that are wetland species, like sedges and uh, rushes. Here's another pond. There is some water in the middle that's visible, um, and that is all uh, a wet, a smaller pond area. And again, you can see rushes and reeds uh, not so much rushes, sorry, sedges. And these are all wetland species. This area looks grassy, um, and it is, but it's also uh, a vernal pool, especially the area to the upper left that's sort of more bluish. Um, that is a very shallow pool, and in the spring and summer, it is absolutely full of life. Um, frogs, toads, salamanders, um, dragonfly uh, nymphs, everybody is in there um, making more. So <clears throat> it's full, like it is just teeming with life in there. These are some of the characters you would find. So uh, upper left would be a spring peeper. Uh, upper right is a northern leopard frog. 
lower right is the uh, wood frog. Uh, these have all been uh, recorded on the uh, field surveys in the EIS. Uh, bullfrogs were not noted back in 2015, but the residents of Marshfield Drive have all um, either heard or seen bullfrogs. And um, so we know they are there as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, another another wetland species is the dragonfly. So the top two photos are dragonfly nymphs who spend their life, that part of their life, in water. They are aquatic creatures. Um, the bottom right photo shows where a nymph has, um, oh, I just want to say that a nymph can be developing in a pond or a vernal pool for up to two years before they are mature and become adult um, and emerge. So then they, <clears throat> the bottom right shows where a nymph has emerged crawling up a, a grass blade and the adult has uh, in, in turn emerged from the uh, husk of the, um, the nymph. And to the left, you'll see an adult, and that is actually an endangered species called Laura's clubtail. Uh, the Jefferson salamander is an endangered wetland species. There are many salamanders, um, and salamanders have been noted on the property as well. They do rely on vernal pools for reproduction. Uh, just recently, all of the turtle species that are native to Ontario have been deemed um, at risk uh, <clears throat> in different degrees. Some are threatened, some are endangered, uh, some are special concern. <clears throat> the red-eared slider is the non-native species in the bottom corner, um, and not endangered. Um, so again, this is a whole grouping of creatures that rely on wetlands um, to live and to reproduce. And they are at risk. Actually, I'll go back. Um, I just want to say that in most cases, um, when I've been researching uh, species at risk, uh, the reason has been loss of habitat or fragmentation of habitat, um, mainly because of development. So, um, yes. So then here we have um, plants, plants that are um, at risk as well. This is Nyssa sylvatica or black gum. It has been found on the subject property. I believe three trees are mapped, and it is uh, an, an at-risk species, uh, special concern, I believe. And um, this one has recently become considered at risk as well, and that is uh, Fraxinus nigra, or black ash. Not to be confused with green ash, which is already dead. Um, here is the um, eastern wood peewee. Uh, they were, uh, eastern wood peewees were uh, noted, observed on these field surveys um, in the EIS, and they are of special concern. Also the wood thrush, special concern, and um, observed on the property during the surveys. Uh, this, the barn owl is endangered. It was not noted on the surveys, but it has been noted by us residents of Marshfield Drive. Um, the past two summers, we have uh, observed barn owl activity, which is pretty exciting. Uh, the bald eagle is a, a species of special concern, and I'm only showing it to you here because it has recently showed up 
Um, I actually saw one flying over the meadow uh, two weeks ago um, and landing in a tree in the forest um, of the subject land. Uh, this is a barn swallow. This is at risk. Chimney swifts, at risk. Uh, evening grosbeak, at risk. And um, uh, the, sorry, these barn swallows were seen, and so were chimney swifts seen during the bird surveys uh, in 2015. Um, evening gross beaks did not show up, but they have also been identified um, by us. This is a shot of the meadow that is part of the subject land. Um, the meadow has some pretty boggy areas. Um, it also is very much a wild meadow uh, full of wildflowers and grasses. And it is actually quite a rich habitat for many creatures, like mostly smaller ones, um, and insects, um, dragonflies, all sorts of pollinators, bees, wasps, um, moths. And um, in the summer, in the evenings, it is absolutely alive with fireflies. So it is actually quite a rich habitat. And um, the monarch butterfly is at risk as well, and has been since, uh, well, considered at risk since 2008. And it is places like this that the monarch needs, um, with milkweed for the larval, um, for the larval caterpillars and um, nectar plants for the adults. Then there are bats. These are two species of bats that are at risk and who have also um, shown up in um, surveys uh, for the EIS. Uh, to the left is the long, what is it, the long-eared, northern long-eared bat, sorry. And to the right is the um, little brown bat. This is a garter snake. Um, I did see that in, in one of the studies, um, one of the comments made was they did not observe any reptile hibernacula. And uh, I would like to say that there are so many snakes around that there must be. Um, and in fact, we have a stump in our backyard where snakes come in and out of. So there is definitely a habitat for snakes. And, um, and there's a lot of food for them, too, with all the frogs and, and toads. Um, this is, uh, actually, this is not an endangered or at-risk owl. It is our neighbor, though, and we're fond of him. And <clears throat> he is living currently in a cavity of a dead ash tree in the road allowance. Um, and that is it for me. Um, I have more notes that I can email to you all with more details, and I'd be happy to do that. But I think I will just be done, unless anyone... Okay, thank you very much. It, would anyone else like to speak to this uh, proposed uh, development? Thank you, Mr. Buter, to the podium, please. And please state your name and address. My name is Doug Buter. I live at 41767 Mill Race Road here in Wainfleet. Uh, Mayor, Council. Um, I, I just want to present a bit of history on the property. Uh, I'm not an environmental specialist. I know I've had the studies done. Um, 
I think they support uh, the development, so I'll let them stand for themselves. Uh, I've been a resident of Waynefleet my whole life. This property was originally owned by my grandfather, who owned the whole western side of this, uh, where the all the way where the soccer fields go, the arena is, all that. Over the last several years, uh, the township has acquired, through multiple purchases, more and more property. Uh, the last purchase um, encompassed this proposed subdivision. Um, it was agreed upon at that time by previous council um, that two road allowances would be created by the by the purchase of the property, creating uh, three individual uh, parcels of land uh, with the intent that it would be subdivided. This was 35 years ago. Um, it's not a new development. It's not a new proposal uh, due to economics, whatever planning, it just has taken this long to, to come to fruition. Um, so uh, I don't, um, yeah, I just wanna give a little history on it uh, from that standpoint. As for the tree cutting, uh, yes, I went in there. It's, it's at the end of the, part of the original agreement with the township was they would provide 300 feet of road construction as part of their responsibility. Um, at the end of that 300 feet, which is where the cul-de-sac is designed right now, it was always gonna be our responsibility to continue the development of that road allowance. All I was doing is what I thought was being proactive and trying to, uh, to get moving on the plan of subdivision. Uh, I didn't think it'd take this long to get to this point, to this meeting, so uh, yeah, bad on me, but uh, I, I was told by the township and the, the region to cease and desist, and I did immediately. As soon as I realized I was doing something wrong, I, I stopped. So um, other than that, um, yeah, thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Buter. Anyone else uh, wish to speak to this again, please, sir? Just to the podium, please. Mr. Mayor, several of the comments that were made tonight related to the uh, uh, natural heritage on the site and the environmental impact statement. Uh, I just wanted to clarify a couple of things. Uh, with regards to natural heritage, the regional official plans policy state, the development site alteration may be permitted without amendment to this plan on adjacent lands to environmental conservation areas set out in Table 7.1, which is available. If it has not been demonstrated, or sorry, if it has been demonstrated that over the long term there will be no significant negative impact on the core natural heritage system compare, uh, um, component or adjacent lands, and the proposed development and site alteration is not prohibited by other policies of this plan. <clears throat> the um, township's official plan states, within the environmental conservation areas, development may be permitted without an amendment to this plan provided, A, it has, it has been demonstrated through an environmental impact study in accordance with section 8.9 that there, are, there will be no negative impacts on the natural features or the ecological functions, and B, the proposed development or site alteration is not prohibited by other policies of this plan. The environmental impact study that was submitted as part of this application, and I'm, I'd like to point out that it was a, uh, it, the study was essentially in two parts. It was an earlier study, and it was then updated at the request of the, um, uh, the region of Niagara. Hence the, uh, the different time frames that, uh, that were pointed out to you. The conclusion of that environmental impact study is given the intent to maintain a significant proportion of the woodland, the proposal does not represent a significant modification to the spatial extent or the boundaries of the woodland. Uh, that 
environmental impact study, and that con conclusion was based, on, uh, you know, is from a, a professional biologist, professional uh, impact study uh, company, and based on the guidelines and requirements of the region of Niagara. Thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Rivers. Would anyone else like to speak to this issue this evening? Thank you. State your name and address, please. Gary Stull, 11274 Golf Course Road, Waynefleet. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, staff, fellow fleeters. I come here this evening to uh, raise concerns over the Marshville subdivision. Uh, my family and I recently moved here approximately two years ago from a major urban center, i.e. Hamilton. I deem myself as a city slicker born and raised until I moved out here two years ago. Since I've been out here, I've found out about a couple of different developments that are going on in this uh, municipality which have raised concerns towards me and my family because we left an urban center to get away from all the congestion, the conflicts, the noises, the smells, and that's why we came out to the country, and we are glad we did and really enjoyed what we've seen, nature and everything. In regards to what you've heard tonight from the residents in Marshville, in regards to the environmental impacts, uh, the, the, the wildlife, the woodlands, it's the same concern I have in regards to what is happening in Waynefleet. Uh, we were made aware of another development uh, just after we moved in, uh, down in the Lakeshore area, which was also deemed an environmentally sensitive area, i.e. the Lakewood Project. The Lakewood Project um, has, has the fowler toad habitat there, which is an endangered species if you look on the provincial endangered species lists. They also had bald eagles residing there. There was a number of different types of trees and plants that were native to the area that were removed. And these are the concerns that I have that I would like to make sure that if council does approve this development, that the procedures are followed properly in regards to what can and cannot be done. One of the major concerns I've heard through the, the other process was how things were being done and people weren't being held accountable because the finger was being pointed from municipal to regional to provincial, different led, led areas of government and who's responsible for what. If you look at any planning policies, the ultimate responsibility comes down to the municipality. Going through the planning justification report for this property, uh, one of the first major concerns I have, if you look at the, the, the the blueprint in front of you is there's two road access. There's two roads on this property. They both, and there's only one point of access or egress to the property coming from Highway 3. I have a major concern with that because if there's ever an, an emergency situation where emergency equipment has to get in or people have to get out, granted there may only be 20 some odd houses if this development's allowed to go, but that could create some problems in the future, in my opinion. Uh, having uh, confined space training, I know that for something not to be de deemed a confined space, it has to have at least two points of access or egress. So one of the concerns I have is that there's only one point. If there's ever a major concern in this area, it, it could pose a problem in the future. We talked about the official plan. You've heard a lot of that tonight. The official plan talks about any new single family dwelling being developed on a one hectare lot, unless there's a hydro, hydrogeological assessment, we can change that to 0.4 hec of an, uh, hectare, which I believe is approximately one acre, which I believe is also a provincial statute that was impl implemented. But according to our official plan, the intent of it was for one hectare. So for me to see 14 units going in this area of 7.6 hectares, I think it's a little bit excessive. In regards to the environmental conservation development or part of the designation of the property where it's zoned residential with an H provision, uh, I've got a concern around what the uh, 
planning justification report says on page 11 under zoning bylaw, it says the subject properties is zoned R1 residential with an H holding provision. The R1 zone permits new residential development. However, a zoning bylaw application is required to remove the H symbol to remove what appears to be an H hazard zone that was incorrectly placed on the property. Who deemed the zoning was incorrectly placed? This is a concern I have. I'm assuming, and you know what happens when you assume something, um, that whoever deemed that zoning at that time, I would think was a professional in their field. There would need to be some research done on that to confirm that, but I'm assuming that that's what happened back in the day. The other concern I, I saw was the sound level predictions indicate the future road traffic sound levels will exceed the MECP guidelines at some of the proposed developments and dwellings in the development. So forced air ventilation systems and I would assume also uh, central air types of systems would be required on those properties to reduce the noise levels as well as uh, improved insulation so those noise issues don't become a concern. On page 12 of the same report, it talks about the WOP's intent, which I believe is the Wayne Fleet official's plan, is intent is to protect and enhance the existing character of Wayne Fleet's hamlets and residential areas through the policies of res residential designations at the same time permitting new housing that is compatible with existing character and can improve the quality of life of existing and future residents. Does this subdivision is it going to improve the quality of life for the existing residents? A number of them are here this evening, and I believe it doesn't. What also happens is when you get a bunch of people together, one of the reasons we left the city was you get congestion, you run into safety issues, and where there's a number of people, there can be potential for conflict. So that's another thing we need to look at as well. If you also look in the report, it talks about vegetation. On, it starts roughly, uh, it talks about the uh, environmental impact statement on page eight of the planning justification report. And it talks about uh, tree removal will be minimized on the properties to help maintain tree cover and wildlife habitat in the area. Tree protection plan uh, will be prepared as a condition of building permits for each lot to assist in maintaining a tree cover. Any required vegetation removal should be conducted in a manner to avoid impacts to nesting birds, roosting bats, and uh, that may utilize habitats on the property. It continues on page nine. No vegetation removal between April 1st and October 15th to avoid impact to birds and bats. I believe that is the same provision that is on the Lakewood property, and I know for a fact that there was tree removal in those time slots, and nothing was ever done. It also states, any lands not required for development on these properties should remain unaltered and allowed to naturally succeed. And one other concern in regards to the property, which, which really struck me, was any security lighting to be installed on the buildings on these lots should be directed away from vernal pools to minimize ambient light exposure to these areas. It also talks about removing vernal pools and replacing them with ponds. You know, here we're, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff here in regards to the environment and the vegetation surrounding this piece of land. And it is deemed a conservation area for a reason, as been stated by the people in the Marshville uh, residents. Like I said, I'm a city slicker, born and raised, move here. I consider myself a fleeter now. Hopefully I've been adopted by the community uh, because the nature that I see every day from my back door looking out over my back field is phenomenal. And from what the people have expressed in the Marshville area, I would hate for them to s lose that the same way that other people may in other parts of the municipality. So moving forward, I just hope that the municipality and council takes all these concerns uh, to heart when they decide what they would like to do with this, this, this subdivision. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Would anyone else like to speak to this issue? Okay, to the podium, please again. Do 
The um, last gentleman spoke to uh, my professional qualifications, my professional abilities. He may not be aware of, but I do have a copy of the, uh, the original zoning bylaw amendment uh, report prepared by Mr. Michael Higgins, who is a very competent professional planner. On page three of that report, it says, the property is presently zoned development D according to zoning bylaw number 51-87 as amended. The, pro the proposed lot containing the existing house is proposed to be rezoned to residential one, and the remaining lands are to be proposed, are proposed to be rezoned to residential one bracket H close bracket. The H symbol stands for holding, and no development can occur until the H is removed. The H will only be removed once the developer has satisfied the municipality's concerns, which will include health department approval, rating and drainage plans, and compliance with the zoning bylaw. There is no reference to an H hazard zone on the property. Okay, thank you very much. So I think we've heard from everybody on this issue here. And uh, the next step is we'll speak to the planner again on this, please. So the next steps are um, a staff report respecting the applications will be brought forward for council's consideration at a later date. Uh, and this report will have a detailed analysis of the planning policy um, and the reports submitted in, um, in support of the application, as well as the agency and public comments received. So after the public meeting, if any further comments um, can be emailed to the clerk or uh, written comments can be emailed or dropped off for the clerk's attention, and that would be included in the future staff report. Um, if anyone wishes to be notified of any future meetings or a decision of council, you can make a written request to the clerk or there's also that sign-in sheet at the back of the uh, council chambers. So if a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written, a written submission to the township before a decision is made, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision to the, of the township to the local planning appeal tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submission to the township before a decision is made, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the local planning appeal tribunal unless, in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. Okay, thank you very much. So just in closing on this issue, if you wish, just to reiterate, if you wish to be notified of the passing or refusal of the proposed application, you must make a written request to the clerk of the Township of Waynefleet. So uh, we're going to take a five minute recess uh, just to uh, let everybody leave that's going to leave, and uh, we'll be back in five minutes. Oh, I need a motion for that, yes. Motion by uh, Councillor Gilmore, seconder. Councillor McClellan, all in favor? And that's carried.
And we'll try to move right along. Uh, mayor's announcements and remarks. Uh, our friends at the Meridian Credit Union have teamed up with Pathstone Foundation for an initiative that will support the Pathstone Walk-In Clinic and Crisis Hotline. During the week of January 28th, you can help us fill the pig with loonies and toonies. One will be available at Town Hall and more information will be shared online. So please support that uh, cause. Meridian will also be working with the township to host the farmer's market again this summer. So that's uh, exciting news. Our MPP, Sam Oosteroff, is sponsoring a free skate at the Waynefleet Arena Saturday, January 26th from 2.10 to 3 p.m. And our next regular meeting of council will be on Tuesday, February the 12th. At that meeting, there'll be a public meeting to discuss building permit fees and charges for 2019. And the public meeting meets the requirements of Section 7 of the Ontario Building Code Act and Division C. It's section 1.9.1.2 of the Ontario Regulation 35006 of the same Act. We will also be discussing user fees and charges for various municipal services and activities for the use of the township properties. Anyone wishing to receive a copy of the proposed change can request this through Randy DeGuire, our Chief Building Official. And now we'll seek uh, Adoption of the minutes from the last meeting. That the minutes of the regular meeting of council held on January 8th, 2019 be adopted as circulated. I have a mover for that. Councillor Gilmore, seconder. Councillor McClellan, all in favor. And that is carried. Okay, and moving on to our uh, drainage report. I uh, look for a motion. Okay, we'll ask uh, a deputy clerk, uh, Corbett, to first read that. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor, um, and to all members of council. As per the drainage advisory committee terms of reference, the selection committee has met. Um, their goal was to review all of the applications submitted by citizens for consideration to be on the township's drainage advisory committee. At this time, the selection committee has put forth their recommendations for council approval. Um, applications have been made available to council for review and just to look at the recommendations and if council agrees, then they can move on with the recommendation process and approve those candidates. Okay, any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a motion on that, please. To approve it. Councillor Van Vliet, seconded. Councillor Gilmore, all in favor? Okay, our clerk will read the candidate names. So the successful candidates for the Drainage Advisory Committee are as follows. Uh, Jerry Veldusen, Matt Henderson, Ken Hessels, Lenny Arts, and John Sunneveld. Okay, moving on to uh, our BSR002 building staff report. I have a motion to receive this. Councillor McClellan, a seconder. Councillor Cridlin, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is passed. Moving on to bylaw enforcement staff report. A motion to receive that, please, for information. Moved by Councillor Gilmore, seconded. Councillor Cridland, any discussion? All in favor? And that is carried.
Okay, I missed that. There's three uh, bylaw reports attached here. So uh, for the second and third one, we'll do them together. Uh, a motion to accept those uh, by Councillor Gilmore, seconded. Councillor Cridlin, all in favor? And that's carried. Okay, moving on to the DSR 001 uh, drainage staff report. I look to council to approve the recommendations in the report. report. And uh, Mr. Operations Manager, would you like to speak to this please? Your Worship and members of council, this report is to begin the process of a new section 78 on the Indian Creek drain. The, it is part of our large uh, 250 kilometers worth of drainage infrastructure. The existing report that we were using uh, was constructed and engineered uh, by Blake Irwin in 1949. A new engineering report is, is required to evaluate the current drain, facilitate the proper maintenance of the drain, and to update the existing assessment schedules. Prior to appointing an engineer to do a complete new report, the Drain Jack requires a notification be sent to the Secretary Treasurer of the local conservation authorities to indicate their intent to undertake a new report. So this is to begin the process. Uh, under Section 78 of the Drainage Act, if a drainage works has been constructed under a bylaw passed under this Act or any pre predecessor of the Act, and the Council of the Municipality is responsible for maintaining and repairing the drain works, considers it appropriate to undertake one or more works of the project listed in subsections 1.1 for better use, maintenance, or repair of the drainage works or of it lands or roads the municipality may undertake and complete the project in accordance with the report of an engineer appointed by it without petitioning or without a petition required to this point. So that we technically don't need a petition by any of the residents. Council has the right to do this on their own. Uh, so we're requesting that we proceed with the process of, re of receiving a new Section 78 report. Thank you. I look for a motion to approve that recommendation. Uh, Councillor Gilmore seconded. Councillor Van Vliet and all in favor. And that is carried. And we uh, now come to uh, correspondence. Uh, refer to council. Is there any uh, issue? Anyone like to discuss any aspect of the correspondence received over the last period of time? Councillor Cridland. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's just there's one item. I'm not sure, but I uh, number five. Um, I would like to perhaps change the status of this one. Uh, from receive for info um, to change it to uh, refer to staff just for their consideration um, only as it references a feedback opportunity for February 28th uh, by the municipality. Um, so leave it at the discretion of staff. Okay, and so number five is uh, received from the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing regarding a proposed amendment to the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe. And uh, we're looking for a report from staff, so is... Not a report, just for their consideration. That they, if they, so do you wish to make a motion that that go forward to staff as a... Yes, just for their consideration. So it, it looks like it's received for info, and so if there's a different status, not a report status at all just for their consideration to monitor it or see if there's feedback that would benefit the municipality. Okay, is there a seconder on that motion to have this sent to staff? Councillor Van Vliet, all in favor? And that's carried. Any other correspondence uh, issues that anyone, anyone would like to speak to? Okay, seeing none. Our Bylaws, the clerk please uh, read those. That the following bylaws be read and passed this 22nd day of January 2019. Bylaw number six, 2019, being a bylaw to appoint members to the library board for the township of Waynefleet for the current term of council. 
Bylaw number seven, 2019, being a bylaw to appoint members to the Committee of Adjustment for the Township of Wingfleet for the current term of council. And can we have a mover on that? Councillor Cridland, seconder. Councillor McClellan, any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? And that is carried. Okay, we have no notices of motion. Uh, no other business, any, biz any other business? Seeing none, and we're going to move into closed meeting. We'll ask for the clerk to speak to that. The council now move into closed session to discuss item under section 239 2C of the Municipal Act 2001, proposed or pending acquisition or proposed disposition of land by the municipality or local board, one item, potential disposition of land, Item under section 239-2C of the Municipal Act, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. One item, potential litigation. Item under section 239-2C and F of the Municipal Act 2001, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board and advice subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose one item, negotiations with Niagara Region Wind Farm. Item under section 239-2D of the Municipal Act 2001, labor relations or employee negotiations, two items relating to a grievance, and minutes of the closed meeting of council held January 8th, 2019. Thank you, we will now move into closed session. Mover a uh, motion for that. Councillor Van Vliet, seconder. Councillor McClellan, all in favor? That's carried. 